Uh, actually, right. I just, whenever you're ready. All right. Hi, good morning, everyone, and welcome to KPI's webinar series. This month, we're doing the SX10 overview. This will be a two-part series. Next month, we'll be showing you how to work with some of the data. Um, before we get started, if everyone could silence their mics, so that way we could give the presenter the attention that he needs. Um, if there's any questions you have during the presentation, just go ahead and put them in the chat box. I'll keep a log of the questions that are going on. Um, if there's anything that we will need to address right then and there, we'll go ahead and we'll stop for a minute and we'll address your questions then. Um, but now let's go ahead and get into it. So this is going to be our, our KPI webinar series. This is our March one. Uh, it's going to be presented by Kenneth Fraunheiser. He's our sales associate in Allentown office. He's also a professional land surveyor. Uh, I'm your presenter, Christopher Gallardo. I'm just a Trimble certified trainer here at Keystone and do support. A little bit about Keystone. Our company overview, we're located in 14 states. We started in 1998. We roughly employ 40 plus employees. Headquarters in Allentown. Our mission statement, excuse me. Uh, we just try to provide a technical solution. We just don't try to provide you with just the equipment. We're here all the way through, provide you with the solution and the support that you need. Uh, just a little bit more measurements the tools that we use here with Keystone and all the way from laser levels all the way up to your high scanners and your MX-7 platforms and UAV and These are just some of our partners that we're with here and um, Pretty much gonna get ready to go turn it over to Ken here. Ken are you you just about ready to take off here? Yeah, here we go um, I think you're gonna have give to uh, give me the controls and Yep. You should have those back right now, right? And you let me know when you can see my screen. It's right there. I change you to presenter. There you go. I can see. Waiting, Ken. Just waiting for your screen now. Okay. You can see my screen? Yes, sir. All right. Fantastic. All right. Well, good morning, everyone. I appreciate you uh, taking a few minutes um, out of your day today to, to go over the uh, the new the new Trimble SX-10. Um, like Chris mentioned, this will be a two-part uh, series. Today will be kind of an overview of the instrument, looking at the field and office software. Next month, we're going to kind of dive into and kind of answer that question of, so once I collect all this data, what am I going to do with it? So we'll highlight some of the tools that are in Trimble Business Center and maybe even a little bit Trimble RealWorks as to uh, uh, what you can do with this data. So uh, right here is just a uh, Trimble scanning platform. You have on your left uh, the Trimble SX-10. In the middle, you have the TX-6, and on the far right, you have the TX-8. Uh, the Trimble SX-10 is a hybrid, if you will. It's a, it's a robotic total station with scanning capabilities, while the Trimble TX-6 and 8 are both traditional, I will call them traditional terrestrial laser scanners. This kind of this screen here kind of gives you a little bit uh, of kind of a matrix of what each instrument is 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 going to be good to use for. Uh, you'll notice that the SX10 um, will do very well in uh, forensics environments, civil applications, survey. Hold on, Ken. Hold on, Ken. Sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, everybody. Um, is that is, your screen isn't fit into the right size? I just want to make sure that everyone else see it, is being able to see the full screen. Um, Mike, if you're on there, can you see the full screen or is that cutting out three quarters of it? I just want to make sure everybody gets a good view. It looks okay on my end. It's okay. Okay. I just want to make sure. Okay. That's fine. That might just my, my screen can. All right. I'm sorry, guys. Go ahead. No, nope, All good. I'm, um, I'm good too, Chris. Okay. I'm sorry. We're good? Yep. Cool. Okay. Um, 
So uh, as I was saying, the, the matrix here kind of shows where the SX10 fits in your portfolio. Um, while you can see that, it, you can certainly use this instrument for industrial facilities and uh, building. Um, it's probably not, depending on your final deliverable, it's probably not um, going to uh, give you the desired deliverable where civil survey applications, this, this instrument will certainly shine. So it's a very familiar workflow. It's a traditional survey workflow. So anybody that's not um, particularly familiar with the terrestrial laser scanning workflow, a typ typical laser scanning workflow is that you would set the instrument up not on a known point, but you would uh, scan targets. These could be paper targets. These, these could be spheres that are set out throughout your project site. You would scan these spheres and then back in the office, you would do a registration, uh, which essentially what a registration is, is taking your individual scans and bringing them together to make one comprehensive point cloud model. This here is a traditional survey workflow. Set up the instrument on a known point, take a back site, uh, and that is going to be your scan orientation. So when you are completed your project and you bring this data back into Trimble Business Center, um, you will have uh, no registration. You'll be able to continue. You'll be able to work with the, uh, the data right away. So it's easy operation. If, if you're already using Trimble Access, your learning curve with the scanning tab, if you will, in Trimble Access is extremely easy. And it's again, it's a seamless workflow right into Trimble Business Center. It's extremely versatile. This instrument can be used every day. I hear a lot of uh, my customers say, I, I you know, want to get into scanning, but one of the things that they they have a problem with is, is the price tag. Scanners are one of the more expensive surveying pieces of equipment out there. So if today you do not have a scanning project, this instrument will operate as a convention or as a robotic total station um, with no problems. Um, and that's kind of why I like to term this as a robotic total station with scanning capabilities. So it can reduce your operation costs, expand your opportunities, let you get into the scanning market. And with one investment, you have uh, unlimited applications of both scanning and robotic total station. So this here is a little bit of the overview um, of the SX-10 system itself. Uh, obviously you have the Trimble SX-10, which is a one second instrument. Uh, it comes with a Trimble tablet. Uh, the new Trimble tablet that was just released recently is the new Trimble T10. The image there that you see is, is the uh, tablet that it originally was released with. Uh, it runs on the Trimble Access Field platform. And then you would have, because it's a robotic total station, you would have your robotic rod, bipod, pole, accessories, prism. Um, and then once you bring that data back into the office, uh, you will either bring your data into Trimble Business Center or Trimble RealWorks. Some specifications of the instrument itself, as I mentioned, it is a one second instrument. It does have re uh, reflectorless technology for those single points that you might want to take. Um, you can see the range um, is, is extremely long. Uh, direct reflex is, is 800 meters. Uh, your auto lock range is, is can be again up to 800 meters. Your communication, this is a little bit different. Um, you're, when you're transferring scan data from your instrument to your tablet, you're transferring that data via Wi-Fi uh, because of the faster rate that you need to transfer the data. Once you get out of Wi-Fi range, you will then be, have the option to flip back over to the original 2.4 gigahertz radio that's in all the S-series instruments. So that's a little bit different. Um, Scanning wise, it's a band scanning technology, so it's not a single point technology. It's you know almost picture a paintbrush going up and down as it's going over your area of interest that you're scanning. Uh, this instrument will collect just over 26,000 points per second. The range on this instrument is 600 meters, which is very long, uh, very far for a time of flight scanning. And you can see the range noise there, whether you're scanning at 50 meters or 120 meters, your range noise is going to be the same at about 1.5 millimeters, which is, is very accurate. Um, this instrument also has the integrated uh, vision technology, has five integrated cameras in it uh, with an overview and primary cameras, and it also has a video plummet as well, which we'll get into here in a second. Some of the benefits, uh, incorporating three-dimensional scanning technology, which is going to allow you to increase uh, 
your, your ROI uh, much quicker. Uh, you're going to reduce your operating costs and your automatic uh, registration uh, process because there really is no registration process um, in the office. It's going to reduce your office time. If you are already an, a customer using Trimble Access and or Trimble's Business Center or RealWorks, your very low learning curve, uh, it's very seamless into those products, uh, which in turn is going to reduce your training costs, uh, be able to ramp up your implementation uh, your time uh, getting this instrument out into the field and you're going to be able to create a richer data set for your client in other words you'll be able to set yourself apart from some of your competitors by having technology such as the Trimble SX10 you can really capture tailor the data that you want to capture you can do a full 360 scan you can window in an area and just scan an area of interest uh, which again will allow you to not over collect or under collect uh, your data that you're interested in collecting. And it's a very high, uh, high density point cloud, 26,000 points per second um, for an instrument like this. It's the only one like it on the market today. Um, in fact, when I started doing laser scanning work, probably almost 10 years ago now, uh, I had a terrestrial scanner that we were using that wasn't collecting much more than 26,000 points a second. And this is a robotic uh, total station as well. So uh, it's, it's kind of neat to see how far the technology has advanced in such a short period of time. Some of the system features of this instrument, um, it's provided with high accuracy surveying um, with, with true scanning speed. It still has the vision integrated into this unit as well, and I can show you, we'll talk about some of the benefits um, about that a little bit later. Um, auto lock tracking, this is an auto lock instrument that will track the prism. Um, as well as you'll be able to use the vision in the instrument to see the um, split screen, if you will. Uh, so you'll be able to see the instrument locked on the prism at all times. So it's built on the S6 platform, just enhanced with the scanning, scanning technology in it. As I mentioned, it's using Trimble Access um, to be the field operating software, and you're using Trimble Business Center. Uh, with this additional scanning module. So if you are a trim, uh, customer that has uh, TBC Advance, you can just add the scanning module. There's no need to repurchase Trimble Business Center. Or if you already have Trimble RealWorks, you can drag and drop that job file right into Trimble RealWorks as well. Again, Trimble is touting the Trimble 3DM technology, which is the most advanced EDM technology in the world. You're getting uh, three distance measurements uh, and collecting in the 3D world, and it's a true three-dimensional scanner. This isn't an instrument that's shooting reflectorless at a rapid rate. This is a true scanner. It's a, it's a very high accuracy uh, piece of serving equipment um, with a, a very small spot size. Um, and it has a full range of uh, DR capabilities and, and a prism. You can do a full dome scan, meaning a full 360 scan above all, all around, both horizontally and vertically in 12 minutes or less. And again, there's no, your scans automatically are registered because of the survey workflow back in the office. Um, again, this instrument is a, it has a one second accuracy. And you can see um, the, the standard deviation, um, even at direct reflex, is only two millimeters. Again, extremely small spot size. And it's, this is a time of flight scanner, which I personally feel is very important if you're doing scans at a distance. Um, time of flight, there's two types of, to kind of go off topic here a second, there's two types of scanners on the market. There's a time of flight and there's a phase-based scanner. A phase-based scanner will do very well in small, smaller areas, shorter distances, but as those distances get farther away from the instrument, um, your accuracy will decrease. Time of flight scanning, that is not the case, and this here is a time of flight scanner. So again, you can capture full dome scans in 12 minutes. It takes about two and a half minutes uh, for imagery, and uh, you can your data range is up to 600 uh, meters. Uh, you have the option of doing a full dome scan, a rectangle scan, which means you would just put a rectangle around the, your area of interest. You could draw a polygon around your area of interest um, 
as well. So this will allow the surveyor to focus on the area that they need and not scan, under scan or over scan areas that they do not need. And you can do multiple scans from one setup. So you could do a light overview scan of your entire, of your you know full 360 scan of your setup. And then you can zoom into the facade of a building and just put a rectangle around it and scan that at a denser rate. So you can do multiple scans from one setup, which will in include, you know, it will allow you to save time and uh, be allow you to move on to the next setup much quicker. So how does the 3D uh, band scanning work? So there's a ro rotating uh, deflecting prism inside the unit itself. So when you tell the unit to start scanning, you actually can hear, it almost sounds like a fan. Um, and that's the prism that's starting up and it starts rotating. Um, so the advantage of that is it's a total, uh, it's a total station with a full scanner embedded in it. Um, it's calibrated um, with serving instruments. You have a consistent range noise, which is very small, as well as uh, your, you can do band layering, which provides unique scanning over single line scanning. So in other words, if you're doing denser scans, the unit will do multiple passes, if you will, and what that allows it to do to increase your density at a very short time frame. You also have the option to pause and resume your scans. This can be very important. Inevitably, when you have the instrument set up along along a, uh, a street, as soon as you hit the scan, the scan button, the UPS truck will drive up and park right in front of your scan. Um, so what this allows you to do is to temporarily um, hit the pause button, allow the UPS truck to move out of the way, and then you can continue scanning it. You can perform other topographic measures while you're waiting for that obstacle to pass. So if you're scanning, you hit the pause button, you can go take, you know, it's going to be a period of time. You can go do some robotic surveying, come back, and then scan again. Um, so, and it's going to, it will scan right where you left off. It will go back to the beginning. Again, it's a nice time-saving feature. As I mentioned before, this instrument also has a full range of the Trimble Vision product inside of it. So it's a full, fully integrated and calibrated camera system that will provide uh, documentation um, for yourself, uh, your, your draft people, as well as your, your CAD folks, as well as the end client. So how does this work? What does this bring to the table, if you will? Um, it's a fully optimized imaging system. Uh, it's high resolution. It's a rapid instrument control. So it's a very live feed um, return rate. So it, it's not choppy at all. It's, it's, it updates very rapidly um, with the precision of a total, total station. Um, as you can see in the picture in the bottom right hand corner, that is the electronic leveling screen that actually has a camera plummet. So when you start leveling up your instrument and you get into the electronic bubble screen, um, what it allows you to do is you can actually see what you're set up over. Once you're over your point, um, you have the ability to take a picture of that, which is a great QAQC measure that will allow you to uh, show you your you know, if there's a discrepancy or somebody has, is, is your work becomes in question, you have photo documentation that you were set up over every point. Um, it's a very nice uh, uh, cover your hiney, uh, uh, you know, feature, if you will. Um, and again, it also has the advanced auto lack tr uh, tracking technology in it as well. There's wide angle overviews and there's also primary camera views that will allow you to be able to zoom into an object, uh, which I have an example of that coming up. Um, it's a precise point measuring, and again, you can document your, your setups um, with the optical plummet, um, which can be, again, very, very useful. So what are the um, field of views here? As you can see, this, this image here is just strictly pointing at the, at the different cameras. You have your, your telescoping camera, your primary camera, and your overview camera, uh, which those are the three cameras that will allow you to zoom in. I believe there's eight levels in total, and with those three cameras, you can, you can zoom in. Here's a great example of what, the, um, what you would see through the instrument itself. 
Um, it's it's uh, at 340 meters. You can see the level of detail that you can see from the from the camera and real time from the instrument. You'll also notice, I think this is a great time to point out that you'll notice that there is no eyepiece um, on this instrument. All your all your optics, all everything you want to see is all going to be through the vision technology on the tablet itself. So there is no eyepiece on this instrument. This is the exact same setup. You can zoomed in looking at the vision technology. The camera on the the picture on the left rather is just uh, I believe uh, we took a cell phone and just kind of put it up to the uh, up next to the instrument and, and took a picture. So you can kind of see the difference of how much you can zoom in. Again, this here is just kind of going over the overview camera, the primary camera, and the telecamera. As you zoom in, your, your image gets much, much crisper. The panorama resolution, um, you have your overview camera on the right, and on your left, you have the, the primary camera. So you can get the level of detail that you're getting is, is, is very crisp, very defined uh, using these different levels of cameras in the instrument itself. This instrument also has the capability of taking imagery. Uh, you can do a full dome imagery capture in less than three minutes. Um, only in this case here, you would only be using the primary and the overview cameras. This can be great for documentation. You can use these images to colorize the point cloud when they come into Trimble Business Center or uh, Trimble Rearworks. In addition, you have the option to publish these images in something called Trimble Clarity. Uh, which will allow not only you, but your end client uh, look at these images without having the need to uh, actually own Trimble Business Center. So how does the um, camera, the optical camera plummet work? It's a traditional uh, plummet. You can still, you still can optically look through the, the camera plummet as you would any surveying instrument, um, but it also has a, a field of view, as you can see on the right-hand side there, that you can look down using the camera. Um, provides remote vision uh, technology, and you can document your setups um, for a QAQC measure. And you can see on the bottom there, that's actually a picture of what's taken. It actually tells you how much you were at a level when you accepted, the, uh, when you accepted your setup, what your uh, instrument height was, station you were set up on, uh, your PPM measurements. So as you can see, there's a lot of great data in there if, if you ever need to go back and try to piece something together after the fact. This here is just briefly talking about the uh, camera plummet um, uh, special pris uh, 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 tri brack, I should say. Uh, so you, this instrument here, if if you would want to do some leapfrogging, you would uh, you would have to purchase additional uh, tri bracks uh, specialized if you want to use the camera function with uh, with this instrument. <clears throat> so this here kind of talks a little bit about um, what uh, how many passes. This instrument will take, as I mentioned before, this is uh, almost like a paintbrush feature, if you will, um, as it scans. It's so um, if if you're requiring a tighter density than the first mode or what Trimble is calling the course mode, it will do multiple passes of your area of interest to achieve the density that you're looking for. So this chart here, and I'm not going to go through and read it all, but you can see you have four modes in the instrument, course, standard, fine and super fine and what your scan density or resolution will be at 50 meters. Uh, it will be 50 millimeters and it will go on from there. Um, in addition, you also can see the camera modes that you have and the pixel resolution uh, with the instrument itself as well. The advanced auto, uh, auto lock tracking. This here is, is a really neat feature. Um, it's, it's tracking a, a passive prism. Um, but you have the confidence of knowing that the instrument is always locked on you. As you can see there on the right-hand side, there's you have a split screen. So your vision technology is always turned on on the instrument, should you choose. And you can see that the instrument is locked on your prism at all times. So that split screen there will allow you to know that it's always locked on. It will minimize lost locks and false targets, um, which will save your tracking time and it will keep you very productive in the field.
instrument communication. I, I touched on this briefly, um, but I think it's worth talking about again. Uh, your, the primary communication method for when you're transferring scan data, images, or video is going to be Wi-Fi. Uh, once you get out of Wi-Fi range and, and you're doing uh, your typical robotic functionality, topography, stakeout type work, um, you would use the same 2.4 gigahertz radio that's in the other S-series instruments that Tribble offers. You also have the option to cable up using a USB cable um, if you're looking to transfer data that way as well. Uh, but I would say most customers that uh, have purchased these instruments to date are using either Wi-Fi or the long-range radio. Uh, from doing some testing and talking with customers, the Wi-Fi range will work up until about 75 feet away from the instrument, um, 100 feet depending on area conditions. And then after that, you'd switch over to the long-range radio. This here is a picture of the Trimble tablet um, that is offered with, with the unit. As I mentioned before, um, Trimble very recently released a new Trimble T10 tablet, uh, which is a window-based product that uh, you can put uh, Trimble Access on that would work with the SX10. Uh, but the field, op the field software is the same. It's just an upgraded tablet. A um, little bigger screen as well as it's, it's really a full-blown computer, 500 gigabytes of RAM, I believe, off the top of my head. Um, but, it, uh, but as of now, uh, we still do have some of these tablets in stock, uh, which, uh, which is a typical tablet that's been around for some time, uh, which is a complete integration workflow uh, from the instrument to the tablet into your computer. The split screen is a great interface to have. Um, as it will allow you to uh, see what the instrument is locked on at all times, as well as being able to enter your point attribute information. Um, it's a live video feed, and like I said, this, this live video feed is not choppy at all. It updates real time, um, to, which gives you immediate visual feedback. Um, and this also, with the split screen feature, does allow you to, <clears throat> excuse me, does allow you to uh, turn that video feature off should you choose, or you can do it the other way where you see video only and just your measure button in the bottom right hand corner. Uh, the controls are in the middle. You'll see two small squares with a line next to them that will allow you to adjust the screen as you need. You can see here, <clears throat> excuse me, you can also do, uh, once you get into stakeout mode, you can have the ability to uh, have a split screen for stakeout. So if you have a DXF uh, in the background, you could see that. You'll be able to see the points that are on your screen, which will allow you to navigate to your points much faster, um, as well as being able to uh, enable the, the vision technology inside to make sure that you're locked on your point and where you need to be in order to, to do your stakeout. You'll notice on the, uh, the, the stakeout screen on the bottom that you actually, uh, there's some line work there that's actually integrated and will show up real time in the video feed. So everything is oriented together based on that station setup. Um, the tablet is very easy to use. It's very similar to a smartphone where you're kind of using your thumb and your pointer finger to zoom in and out. Um, as well as uh, once you look at the scan data, you, you have your setup, you collected scan data, you have the option uh, to actually zoom in and out and see the scan data real time on the tablet, not only in plan view, but you also have the option to flip the, the scan into three dimensional views and pan around to ensure that you scanned your entire area of interest as well. This here is another uh, screen showing the optical uh, plummet camera documentation. Again, this can be very good and it's very crisp, clean data uh, that you can tell distinctively exactly where the instrument was set up and what it was set up over. So same, uh, same survey types um, as with an optical instrument uh, as far as setting up your station setups. Uh, you have added benefit of a scan station setup as well, um, which is a, and that there would be more of a scanning workflow. So you have the option of doing, and I would say most of my customers that have these instruments are doing the typical 
uh, scan uh, survey workflow. But if you do get into an area where, you, for whatever reason, maybe you need to go back to an area, your control was 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 removed or what have you, uh, you do have the option to do a target list registration and uh, go back into the office and register in Trimble Best Business Center at a later time using like features in the scans. Um, so that there would allow for quick field deployment uh, setups with no traversing. Um, and you'll also be able to review your scans in three-dimensional uh, views before moving to the next setup. This here is just a little illustration of that. So <clears throat> if you picture the uh, black line here being a building, uh, your, rec your blue rectangles represent a traverse that, that uh, is going around the building. The area in red is an area that was not, uh, no data was obtained from each setup. Uh, you could either put a traverse point in that area, a dog leg, if you will, and do a scan, or you can simply set the scanner up at the area that will allow you to see the most information at one spot. And from there, you can do a scan. Back in the office, you would register your traverse data with the free station set up all in one package. So who are SX10 customers? Who will benefit most from using this piece of equipment? Surveyors, hands down, makes a ton of sense in the world. You can do land surveying, boundary surveying, engineering work. Again, it's a robotic total station with scanning capabilities. In addition, um, anybody that's getting into mapping, uh, a scan service provider, um, to be uh, very frank with everybody, you do not always need a million points per second uh, to do a scan. Uh, for a topographical survey, surveying a detention basin, uh, for typical needs, you know, uh, uh, you know, a data point every half an inch probably is not is probably a touch overkill for some of those uh, scenarios. The SX10 will do a much better job because you can scan farther to traverse uh, works uh, workflow as well as your point density is going to be appropriate for uh, the items that you are scanning. Forensics and public safety are using the SX-10 a lot because of its ease of use and contractors. Contractors, again, are using this equipment more and more every day to document um, areas that they have been working on. Applications uh, that are kind of drilled for the SX-10, uh, topography, road work, volumes are huge with the SX-10, as well as infrastructure um, as built. Uh, power lines, uh, mines and quarries, tank calibrations are also great um, tools uh, for the SX-10. Um, so as, um, as you kind of get out and you start using the technology more, I think you'll find additional uses for it. But I would say anybody that does any type of topographical road work or volume or as built, this is an instrument that you should strongly take a look at. This next couple of slides are just uh, kind of some uh, um, areas that the SX-10 will do very well in and why. So as an example, uh, topographical surveys, you can see on the right-hand side, doing street intersections. You no longer have to play frog or out in the street. You can scan everything from the side of the street and then come back, uh, come back to the office and draft up your data at a later time. Uh, no reason to go on people's properties for encroachment issues. It allows you to capture this data quickly. And it's not only at ground level, you're capturing street signs, Traffic arms with traffic lights on it, uh, lights, uh, roof heights, you're collecting all this data at the same time. This allows uh, you as the land surveyor, you can almost ensure that you do not need to go back to a site a second time for something that was missed. You've captured all the data the first time that you were visited to that site, especially a project that's at a distance. This can be a, a gigantic benefit. This is a case study uh, that was done um, by Aztec. Um, these were one of the first customers that uh, actually used the SX-10 in production. Um, and you can see here at the end of the day, their, uh, their topographic exhibit is exactly what, prob potentially exactly what you're creating today. But the image on the left is, is the point cloud that was registered and classified in Trimble Business Center. The classification actually separated the, the buildings from the ground 
um, the high vegetation, the poles, um, so that you can easily manage and work with your data as you need to. Roadway corridor surveys. Uh, again, using your survey workflow, you can scan large areas in a short amount of time, uh, which in turn is going to increase your productivity. Uh, you'll be able to measure with, again, without having to, to cross traffic too often, um, and it's going to enhance your site uh, visualization uh, for the design process. Again, all these images can be viewed uh, without the need of having Trimble Business Center through Trimble Clarity, uh, which will allow the design team as well as the end client to look at these images uh, in a collaborative effort. On the right-hand side, you can see at the bottom there um, is actually scan data along with some line work integrated uh, as part of the beginning of a corridor survey. This here is a is a full point cloud uh, of, a, of an area that was um, uh, along a street with some high banks that um, that uh, let's see here uh, uh, Parson Brinkenhoff was able to survey without having to put uh, their survey crew not only in the road but they also didn't have to navigate these steep slopes. This point cloud was then ex uh, sampled and the ground was extracted. And a tin mush was created based on uh, the ground only. So at the end of the day, you can see that cross sections, all the deliverables and all the tools that you're currently exist, uh, used to using uh, can be used here. Um, but as you can see that you are just collecting the data in a different matter, matter and it's collected more efficiently, quicker, and along with keeping the survey crews out of harm's way. And this here, using Trimble Vision, you can actually see the contours up on top of the existing conditions. Again, this is just another intersection that was scanned. Um, what you're seeing the scan for anybody that's not inter or not familiar with scanning, there's multiple different ways to view a point cloud. This here is is what's called a an intensity hue uh, view of the point cloud. You're, you'll notice that the the roadway, the darker colors are are your darker black colors, where some lighter colors, maybe curving and things like that, will show up in like a blue or a yellow scale. And it's all based on reflectivity. Um, and that's how this is this is viewed. You can also view the point cloud by overlaying the images on it. Uh, you can view the point cloud uh, in a grayscale, uh, as well as each station can have its own color. So there's multiple different ways to, to view a point cloud. And during your drafting process, chances are that you will change the view depending on what you're trying to create or uh, what you're trying to draft at that time for the ease of the drafting. As an example, if you're doing a parking lot, uh, grayscale works very well because of the difference between the parking stripes and the parking lot itself. Um, that there will uh, allow you to, those paint lines to pop out to be able to draft them in a short amount of time. Volumetric surveys, um, stockpiles, you know, I always use the story, I, I personally uh, was out and I scanned a stockpile one time and somebody was questioning my volumes, another surveyor, and that surveyor took some points around the bottom and took some on the top and created a volume. Meanwhile, I scanned all sides of the stockpile and it actually was uh, came up to be a, a pretty significant difference. Um, so it's it allows you um, as the surveyor to know that you've collected a lot of data on the stockpile to create the best volume that you can. Um, as well as a lot of stockpiles can be very steep and somewhat dangerous to walk on. In this scenario here, there's no need to, to get near the edge of the stockpile. Uh, can be all scanned and that data can be collected later uh, back at the office for computations. This here is a stock, just a, a, a pretty simple uh, stockpile uh, back in Trimble Business Center. You can see this customer decided to take some shots around the bottom of it to define the edge of the tin. A tin mesh uh, was created. And a volume was then generated from that. 
And again, this is a cut fill report that you would potentially, uh, you're used to giving now, maybe you're using another CAD software. This can all be done in Trimble Business Center. So your import of your field data to create in a final deliverable is all done in one piece of software. This is a report that Trimble Business Center will, uh, that you're able to extract that you can use as a final deliverable to your client. Infrastructure is another great um, application for the Trimble SX-10, scanning of bridges, dams, tunnels, uh, power substations, uh, above ground piping, uh, wires, anything that's at a distance or that is hard to be able to see, uh, I'm sorry, uh, able to access maybe a bridge span over a river or something like that. The Trimble SX-10, because of its ability to scan at further distances, is a great tool for the job, as well as the fact that it can be done very rapidly. Remember, a full dome scan can be done in less than 12 minutes, and especially if you're you know, just zooming into an area, your area of interest and doing a scan, your scan time is literally going to be minutes. This here is showing that you have a real-time uh, live video feed using the Trimble Vision. This is just another screenshot of the uh, tunnel that I believe that we were just looking at in, in uh, Trimble Business Center. The reason for the different colors is that the each scan setup uh, is in this scenario here is being viewed as a different color. So all the blue points are from a setup, all the green points and the red points are from additional setups. What this allows for you to do during a QAQC process is cut sections through your point cloud to ensure that you have no issues, uh, that all your point clouds line up. So in other words, you wanna see blue points on top of green and red points on top of green uh, so that you know that there's no issues with your scan data. It's just a view of the of the point cloud in that multi-hue view. This here, I always like this to show this view because you can see the level of detail that you're getting from this scan data. All those, the the top portion of the of the sheet that you're looking at there, you can see that the blue is the actual tunnel itself, um, but those green hairlines, if you will, are actually cracks that are in um, that are in as part of that tunnel, and you can see how easily they pop out. So if there's some sort of monitoring uh, application, this this is a great tool to use for that, as you can see, and you can actually draft these cracks and monitor these cracks over a period of time uh, using the Trimble SX-10. Again, some point-to-surface reports that you can generate all out at Trimble Business Center. There are many, many more applications that we talked about today. I just We just tried highlighting uh, the majority of them being as-built condition data, power line clearances, utility surveys, mines, and quarries. Um, but it's really endless. There's no reason why it would take a little bit more time if you one of your clients is an architect and they need to... Uh, the scan the facade of a building, uh, maybe for an elevation view, this tool could be used for that as well. The Trimble SX-10 is a, it's a one-stop piece of equipment that will allow you to, uh, to do tr traditional robotic total station work as well as scanning and that seamless workflow from the field data, from the field software to the office software is a very seamless process and you can do a lot of of uh, deliverable creation, if you will, from one piece of software.
survey adjustments of the scan data. Um, scans are automatically registered with no uh, survey stations. No office registration is, is needed, which eliminates uh, the concerns for having a lot of overlapping data, uh, which will allow you to spread your setups up a little bit more should the deliverable allow. Um, you can use this data to analyze and measure in the field. Um, and back in the office, you get straight to creating that deliverable without having to do that registration process. Again, the, the, the layering advantage of the band scanning will allow you to get a denser point cloud in a shorter period of time by, again, using that, what I like to call the paintbrush, the paintbrush effect of scanning, band scanning up and down uh, your area of interest, whether it's streets, buildings, what have you. It's a complete integrated, integrated um, imaging system that has uh, multi uh, cameras in the unit itself that has eight, the eight different levels. Levels one and two would be your overview camera, your primary camera or levels three and four, and your telecamera if you're zooming way out is uh, zoom levels five through eight. Uh, Myself, as well as some of my associates, did some testing down in Atlantic City uh, where we were uh, set up on the boardwalk and we were looking, at, uh, we took a reflectorless shot on a street sign approximately 3,000 feet away. And by using the telecamera, we were actually able to zoom into that street sign and read the actual words on the street sign over 3,000, you know, it was about 3,000 feet away. So the, the, uh, the integrity of these cameras is extremely, extremely good. So you can see as we're zooming in here, the, the quality of the cameras that are embedded in the SX-10. The scanning module in Trimble Business Center um, allows you to, has such functionality, which we will look at um, next time of being able to, if you decide to do a free station scan, you can do some cloud registrations, you can uh, do any type of network adjustments that need to, need to be done. Uh, there's some tools in there, some classification tools. There's some cut plane tools. There's also a very useful tool called, uh, called uh, Virtual uh, DR, Virtualist Reflective, where you can actually pick off the images, uh, pick coordinate data off the images with one click uh, by using the images and the point cloud together. Um, so there's many tools beyond that, but those are some of the tools that I like to highlight to show people that can uh, very quickly help you create that end deliverable. Again, our next um, webinar next month will be going um, over a lot of the functionality of Trimble Business Center itself. Again, using the, the enhanced uh, point cloud workflow uh, will allow you to navigate multiple views, put some limit boxes around areas of, that you're interested in, as well as the, the software also allow you to export into industry standards uh, point clouds, such as E57, LAS, RCP files, so that you can take this data into other pieces of software. You can take that recap file and start using it in an Autodesk product. If you're currently a Leica user and you're using Cyclone, you can have, also have exports that you can take it into this pieces of software as well. So it's a very versatile piece of equipment as well as the software is very versatile to allow you to allow you to use all the tools that you have in your toolbox, whether it's it's AutoCAD or a Bentley product or a Topo Dot or what other software packages you may have or you may need to invest in in order to create your deliverable. This will allow you to take this data and it's not proprietary just to Trimble Business Center. And this is just, uh, again, just kind of uh, reiterating some of that there. Different types of software that this data can go into. It's a complete field to finish workflow um, from, from the beginning to the end uh, with very few uh, steps in between. So with that, uh, we try to keep our webinars at about 45 minutes to an hour. It looks like I'm about to, about at that time. Um, Chris, do we have any any questions uh, from the group? Uh, there's been no questions from the group. Um, if you guys want to ask anything right now, I mean, I don't see any of you guys haven't texted anything in or message, but if you guys want to ask anything now, go ahead, open forum. Um, as far as the data, um, if anybody's been following 
my page on LinkedIn. That's some of the data I'm going to be using with next month. So if there are any questions on there with like the bridges and some of the other things you've been seeing on there, I'll be demonstrating how to use that point cloud and how to get all that data out of there. Um, if there's no questions, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll hang out for about uh, five minutes or so and see if there's any questions. If not, after five minutes, I'll go ahead and turn the session off. So it looks like we actually just did have a uh, question just pop up here, just asking what the approximate cost of a full setup is. Um, so um, I would say with the Trimble SX10, the tablet, um, all the accessories that you would need, uh, as well as training, you're going to be somewhere in the neighborhood of, you know, let's say plus or minus about 60,000. Um, what What's important to realize there that terrestrial scanners can range anywhere from uh, 75,000 up to 120, 30,000 dollars. So this is a piece of equipment that, for the type of work that it does, um, and what it's integrated in one piece of equipment at the price point, I think is it's it's very reasonable uh, for what you're able to do out of that. Um, at, at Keystone, we offer you know uh, trade-in programs as well as uh, some promotional things from time to time. So. Uh, you know, those are things to look at, too. And that's a full package, including everything you would need, including training to get up and running. Yeah, and that's awesome. If anyone out there that's on the webinar today needs any help with TBC or anything, if you're using TBC, please feel free to reach out to me, and I'll get you guided. Or if you need training, I can come out and get you going in the right direction. Okay, another question here. Let's see. Is the SX10 suitable for high-rise uh, vertical surveys? Um, I'm going to say potentially. Um, it depends on your end deliverable. If you're scanning a high rise uh, to see if it's leaning one way or the other, like a monitoring application, absolutely. Um, or are you scanning the high rise vertical application uh, to create a elevation view? Uh, potentially, um, it really it's going to depend in that sense. Then, how much time do you have? Do you need to zoom into just an area and do a scan, or um, it would be more of a time issue at that point, um, but it all depends on the level of detail you need on that deliverable. But it absolutely can be um, a, a certainly a good tool to use uh, for that type of project. Um, re computer requirements uh, for TBC. That is a great question. I'm going to let me hop over here. Let's pull up the data sheet and look at that together. Chris, can you see my screen there? So, uh, see part of it, yep. Okay, so you can see here, I'll just put this in the middle of the screen. This here is uh, on the Trimble uh, Business Center data sheet. Um, these are kind of the recommended uh, processors and recommendations for uh, Trimble Business Center. Um, with the scanning module, it's recommended that um, uh, that you have a 32 gig or greater uh, RAM, as well as your hard disk requirements. Um, Chris, and maybe you could speak to this a little bit better. I would say one of the things that I don't know that it's mentioned on here, but I have a lot of customers that seem to have some very good success with this, uh, with Trimble Business Center is having a solid state hard drive. Um, so I don't know if you yes. have anything to add to that, Chris. Yes, solid state hard drive, you're using a laptop. You don't want your regular, it's going to, uh, if, especially if you're using the scanning platform and the photogrammetry, it's going to speed everything up a lot quicker. If you're just using a regular without a solid state, it's going to, uh, double your time when you're bringing these big projects in. That's all I would say. Um, unfortunately, this equipment cannot be used with uh, with the TSC3. There's just not enough um, internal horsepower on the trim on the TSC3 to run a Trimble SX10. Uh, but you can use the Trimble um, Access software. So that that software can be transferred from a TSC3 onto a, a T10 or or the convent or the typical uh, tablet. Uh, and use it that way, but a TSC3 at this time is not, <clears throat> excuse me, capable of running uh, the SX10. How close can the SX10 scans uh, scan to the station set up? Um, I want to say it's about a meter. Um, it might be in the data sheet here. And let's see, it's about three three foot of. Um, I don't see the data sheet on that. Yeah, I'd have to. I'd have to check. Um, so what actually? Uh, 
as far as being uh, horizontal away from the instrument, I want to say it, it's less than a meter for sure. Um, when you're doing a full dome scan, you will notice that you the scanner cannot scan under itself naturally. So you'll have about a five to six foot cone around the bottom of the scanner, uh, the vertical view that it that it can um, that it can see there. But um, I'm going to say that this that you can get very close to objects uh, to do your scanning. So uh, this is a this is a great question. There's actually a white paper out on this one. Um, Noel, if you could, um, Noel has a great question. Is it true you should capture this the scan in a local coordinate system so you can prevent um, double scanning in Trimble Business Center? The Trimble has a white paper out on that. Um, and uh, maybe that's something instead of me uh, spending the time and getting really digging down deep into it, we could send you that white paper. But uh, you can um, put this data on state plane coordinates uh, just with the caveat that, you know, if you're uh, scanning in state plane coordinates, you're getting grid distances, not ground distances. Once you bring it up to the ground, it's no longer state plane coordinate, although it's going to look like one. So um, there are some scaling issues that you do certainly need to be aware of. Uh, when you're when you're doing a project such as that. Um, so, Noel, maybe if you could um, just email um, let me bring up my email address again. Um, so it's kfronheiser at keypre.com, not ko comma. That was a typo on my part. Um, or Chris, uh, you could email one of us at, at that email address and we will certainly get that white paper out as well as uh, maybe we could talk to Andy about putting the white paper on our blog as well uh, so that everybody can uh, can take that paper off of there. So I'll ship that over to Andy uh, to, to be able to post. So there, there, uh, there are five cameras, uh, three, uh, three are looking forward um, at different levels, and then the one looking down, where is the fifth? Um, so you have your, your overview camera, um, your primary camera, and then your, your tele camera, which has different uh, view settings in it. So um, that's kind of what I was trying to, to drive home there. Um, okay, Noel, yep, I appreciate you emailing that out there. Um, uh, like I said, we can stay on here for a few more minutes if anybody has any additional questions. Um, again, those are some e email address that you can email us uh, for additional questions or if you'd like uh, us to uh, come out and uh, do a demo. Again, next month, um, our webinars are um, the last Tuesday of every month at 9 a.m. Um, our next one looks to be April 24th at 9 a.m. And uh, that there will be basically diving into Trimble Business Center and showing some of the functionality and how do you work with all this point out cloud data once it's collected. Um, so that's, uh, and Chris will be heading up that effort, so. And I'm gonna be doing that one in my house with a new baby screaming in the back. Yeah, <laughs> here's hoping, or at least your wife's hoping, I'm sure. So um, I'd like to thank everybody for their time and uh, hope to see you next month. Have a great day, everybody. Thank you.